Welcome to the demo video of our Income and Expense Tracker Spreadsheet. Our Income and Expense Tracker Spreadsheet has a total of seven tabs. The first tab that you will find on this spreadsheet is our README tab. On the README tab, you'll find some quick instructions, as well as a link to this instruction guide you're currently on, our Tips and Tricks page for Google Sheets, our General Help Desk page where you can find most of our FAQs, as well as a link on how to contact us. If you scroll down to the bottom of the spreadsheet, you'll find a little bit more spreadsheet information. On here, for example, you'll find the current version. As we regularly update our spreadsheets based on feedback provided by you, our customers, we always make sure to include a spreadsheet version so you can easily check if you're using the most up-to-date spreadsheet. If you go to the bottom of this instruction guide that you're currently watching the video on right now, you'll see a change log. Every time we make an update or a change to the spreadsheet, we'll place an update here as well and rename the spreadsheet with a new version so you can easily see if you're using the most up-to-date version. If there is a new version available, all you have to do is just click on this new template button here to open the most up-to-date version of the spreadsheet. Just know that if ever your spreadsheet stops working, for example, because you modified formulas or you would just like to start from scratch, you can also use this new template button as well. The next tab that you'll find in our spreadsheet is the Start tab. Now in the Start tab, you can basically set up your complete spreadsheet. Any information that you'll enter here will be added automatically to all the other tabs for you. So the thing that you can change here is your currency. So it is standard set to the dollar sign. But if you, for example, use the euro, all you have to do is double click on this field, delete the dollar sign that is there by hitting the backspace button on your keyboard and just type in a currency sign or abbreviation of your own. So for example, if we enter the euro sign here, now let's say when we go to over the uh, year dashboard, we can see that all of our currency has been changed to the euro. So it will work with any currency sign or abbreviation. You can just type it in over here. Now the next section that you'll find here is your income and expenses subcategories. So in total, you can enter 65 income and 65 expense subcategories. Now this spreadsheet can be used for both for personal reasons or as a small business tracker basically. So you can enter any income or expense subcategories that work for you. So let's say for example, you're using this for personal reasons. You can enter here paycheck number one and let's say you're using this with your partner, paycheck number two, perhaps you receive money from gifts or a bonus. You can just enter this information here. So basically all you have to do is click on a field and type in some information. So let's say example even, you can enter any subcategory that works for you. So again, in total, you can add 65 income and 65 expense subcategories. Now we've also included a section on the right here where you can adjust the start date. Now, while you can use this spreadsheet for as many years as you'd like, we have included the option to basically add savings goals for up to five years. Now, if you're using this as a small business, you might be looking at this as a profit goal instead. So basically this would be just your income minus your expenses. So let's say for example, it's currently November, 2023, and we want to start in next year. So let's say January, 2024, we just adjust our start date here. And we can see we can now enter up to five years of savings goals or profit goals, depending on what you're using this for. So let's say, for example, you don't have to enter this straight away. You can do this month by month. Let's say for January, we hope to not spend basically $1,500. And in February, we hope to not spend $2,500 because we're expecting a higher income. Now, like I said, you can adjust this on the go. You can set this up in advance. You can just use this in whatever way this works for you. But of course, if you want, you can also leave this empty. Now, before we continue by entering our information, the next step we're going to have a better look at is our balance dashboard. If you're using multiple credit cards or you have multiple accounts, what you can do is use this balance dashboard to keep track of your account balances. This will also allow you to see if you've entered all your transactions as now you can easily compare your account balance to the balance dashboard as shown in here. So let's say for example, we have a checking account, we have a second checking account and we also use our credit card. What we can do is just enter these over here. And when these are entered over here, they will automatically load in a dropdown for you in the log tab. Now, if you'd like, you can also adjust the type of accounts. And if you want, you can also add a start balance to basically have an accurate current balance. So let's say, for example, we start with 1500, 500, and we owe $500 on our credit card. So since we owe money, we're going to be adding in a negative amount here. So we get a more accurate balance. Now we've also included the option here of having a balance by date. 
So if, for example, you want to see how much you've spent on a credit card in a certain time frame because you need to pay that credit card off, or you want to see if you've accurately like logged the transactions for that period, what you can do is select a credit card here. And then what you could do is select a from and a to period. Now this will work best once we have entered information in the log tab. So we're going to do that first. Now, basically how this spreadsheet works is that you enter your transactions in the log tab and then they will automatically update on all your other dashboards for you. So let's say for example, it is currently the 1st of January, 2024. And in our checking account, we received a thousand dollars. That's income and we received that from a paycheck. When we enter this information here, let's say when we go to our month tab and we select January 2024, we can see that our information has automatically been updated for us. So you don't have to do anything over here, but just adjust the month and the year. Now this works the same way in the custom dashboard. So let's say we've already set it here to January 2024 till the 3rd of June 2024. Again, we can see this information is here. In a year, we can also see, let's say we start on the 1st of January, 2024. It was also set to 2024 already. We can see that our information has updated. So now basically, again, all you have to do in these dashboards is just adjust the dates in the little overview sections. So it's just as easy as that. And then all your information will load for you. So let's say we add on the 24th of January, 2024. You can also, by the way, double click on these fields. There's a little calendar section there as well. And let's say in our second checking account, we received $50 and that was a gift. Now we can see again that all of this information has been added. And a feature that we have also added is that your income section and your expense section will automatically rank from highest to lowest for you. And you'll be able to see the percentage sign for each of the subcategories as well. So now that we've had a look at how the log and uh, tabs work, let's have a little bit of a better look at the individual sections on each tab. So you can basically see how each of the graphs work and how you can read the information on the tab. So now for the demo purposes, let's quickly add a transaction. So let's say the 1st of January, 2024. We also went grocery shopping and it was exactly $100. Now when we add this information here and we got rid of all these error signs because those are basically just shown because there is no information. So just know that these automatically do update. You just need to enter information. Is that we can see that now on the top here, we select January 2024. So let's say, for example, if you would go to February again, you can see it's completely empty because we have not added any information for that time frame. So now January 2024, we can see our savings goal. That's the one that we entered in the start tab. So it could also be profit goal, for example, was $1,500. At this moment, we have received $1,050 in total. And we have spent $100, which means that our actual savings at the moment is $950. So now we can see our savings progress. So at the moment, based on the actual savings that we have and the savings goal, we're at a 63.33% rate. So basically, this updates automatically for you. You'll also be able to see here your income as well as your expenses. So you can compare these to each other and you can also see your savings rate. So this is the amount of money you have saved off your income. So at this moment, because we've only added a few transactions, we're at 90.48%. Now this will of course adjust the more transactions you add. So this will always keep updating. Now again, the income and expense sections will automatically rank from highest to lowest. So that way you can easily see where most of your money went. And you can also easily see on the graph, they'll be added from highest to lowest. So here you can see that 95% of our income at the moment came from paycheck number one. And we can see that a roughly 5% came from the gifts. And you can see this information as well as when you click on the graph and you hover over these little sections, you can see the individual subcategories and the percentages. And they'll be added on the right here as well. So this works the same for the expense breakdown. Now our custom tab is exactly the same. So all the graphs work exactly the same. The only difference is, is that here, instead of just selecting a month, what you could do is select your own start and end date. So this was included for those that would like to make weekly overviews or perhaps quarterly overviews or even semi-annual or like um, half year overviews. So what you can do is again, just double click on this field and you select your own start and end date. So let's say if we would like to make uh, the second quarter, so that starts on the 1st of April and ends at the end of June, we just adjust these dates here and we can see because we have not entered any information yet that it is completely empty. 
Now, what might be good to know is that you can create as many overviews as you'd like. So you don't need to keep on switching. If, for example, you would like to have two overviews next to each other, what you can do is simply click on this little tab and click duplicate. It will create an exact duplicate of the tab that you have. So let's say, for example, this is quarter two of 2024. We can just rename this and now we have a quarterly overview that is ready for us. And now once we add information to that lock tab, this overview will automatically update for us. And again, all you have to do if you would want to change that is just change the start and change the end date. Now this works the same for the month overview. You can just keep on duplicating this to create multiple month overviews, or you can just keep on switching the dates. That's completely up to you. So then the last step that we have is the year overview. So again, for the year overview to change this, what you just do is double click on this field and you can start it on any day. That might be good to know because I know in certain countries, I think for the UK, for example, you don't start on the 1st of January. Your fiscal year starts on, for example, I think it is April. So you can just go through these dates and select, for example, the 1st of April, and you can see that everything automatically updates for you now. So even if you won't start on the 1st of April, but let's say it is the 2nd or the 3rd of April, your fiscal year starts, just know that the months will automatically show from the 3rd of April till the 2nd of next month. So this one will be the 3rd of May till the 2nd of June. So it is set up to exactly track for one month. So you can easily see your year overview and adjust it to your own fiscal year or basically any overview that works for you. At any point, you can switch back between these dates. So let's say you would like to have a regular annual calendar year overview. You just set it to the 1st of January 2024, and we can see that that overview automatically updates. In here, you'll be able to see your savings goals you have added on your start tab and then compare them to your actual savings. So how much you've saved actually. Now, if you're not adding any savings or profit goals, this is of course empty, but you can use this section or not. It is completely optional. You also have a year overview here where you'll be able to see month by month your income, the expenses, and the savings are then calculated as your income minus your expenses. And then over here, you'll also have a year to date savings. So that is basically the total of how much you have saved up to that month. Then you have a graph here where you can see the savings for each month. You'll have an income breakdown. So basically what you had on the month and custom overview, it will just be a total for the full year. And you'll also be able to have an expense breakdown here as well. And over here, you'll also have a cash flow section. So you can see basically your income, and your expenses, and your savings on a month by month breakdown. You can see your savings progress here as well. So that is based on your total annual goal and how much you've saved this year on total. Or again, you can look at this as profit, depending on if you're using this for your small business or if you're using this for personal reasons. Your year to date savings. So this information is displayed here in a graph as well. So you can see this going up or down, depending on if you're spending more or saving more for each month. And that way, basically, you can see how much you're at total for the year. And then, of course, we could not exclude an income month by month breakdown. So these, again, are also ranked from highest to lowest based of the total of your year. So here you can see for each of your income and the same for each of your expenses here, how much you have earned or spent for each of the subcategories. So you can see a month by month breakdown and you'll also be able to see a total for the year as well as an average based on the 12 months. Now, there are a lot of rows here because there's 65 rows, but you could make this overview a little bit more compact by hiding the rows. So let's say, for example, you're only using five at the moment out of the 65 spots. What you can do is we'd like to keep an extra couple of spots in case you would like to add more. Um, but of course, you can always unhide the rows and add those later. But what we like to do is just take the top row, then hold shift in your keyboard and basically scroll to the most bottom row. Click on that. And now right click and click hide rows. A warning will pop up. You can just click on OK. And then basically what you'll get is a little bit more of a compact view. So you do still have three extra spots so that you don't have to redo this step if you're adding more information in the start tab. But at any point, if you would like to make these rows available again, you just click on these little arrows, click OK again, and they'll just be back. Now, we personally just like to do this so that you don't have an endless overview that you need to be scrolling through. So that way you can easily see your income month by month and you can do the same for the expenses. So you could again, click on that top row, bottom row and click hide rows, click on okay. 
and we have now a lot more nicer and a more of a compact overview. Now you can do this in the log as well, by the way, because if you keep on adding transactions for five years, this log can get very long. So what you can do is, for example, let's say the month of January is done. What you do is just click on the top row, click on the bottom row, and then click hide rows. Now this information will still be available in all of the overviews, but that way your log won't feel so long. Any point you need to adjust these transactions or you want to review them, you just make them available again. Another tip that we'd like to include is that you do not have to enter your transactions in chronological order. All you have to do to show them in chronological order is click on this little arrow here and click on sort sheet A to Z. And when you do this, your transactions will automatically be rearranged for you. You can do this as many times as needed. So you can just keep on adding those transactions without having to add lines in between or making sure they're in chronological order yourself. So that way, if you have multiple accounts, you can use account by account and then afterwards just sort them in chronological order or just leave them as it is. You don't have to have them in chronological order either. Now, the last thing that we're still going to have to look at is that balance dashboard to basically show how it works and I've added some transactions. So we can basically see for our checking account, we started with $1,500, we earned an extra thousand, spent a hundred, so our current balance would be $2,400. Now, if we would be selecting checking here and we select, let's say that first of January to the end of January, because we specifically wanna see how much came in and out of that account for that time frame, we can see that $900 was added to the account in total. So that would be that $1,000 that we earned minus the $100 that we spent. Now, at any point you need to adjust the balance, for example, because there are transactions that you do not enter in your lock. Let's say, for example, you made a payment towards your credit card. What you can do is make these adjustments here. So let's say on the 7th of January, 2024, out of your checking accounts, you transferred $500 into your credit card. And now when you make that adjustment here, you can see that $500 has left that checking account to pay off the credit card that we had a balance of minus $500 at. So you can see that adjustment is made and our current balance is zero. That's why it's not showing anything over here. So any adjustments that you need to make, for example, interest charge that you're not adding to your log tab, or just transferring money between accounts. So let's say even if you would withdraw money, so let's say we had a cash section over here, and let's say on the 8th of January, we withdrew money from our checking accounts. So it was $100 and that gets added to our cash because now we have it in cash. We can see that now $600 is left at uh, checking accounts. So that would be the credit card and the cash. And we now would have $100 in cash available. So money you transfer between savings or between checking accounts, any of those transactions you can enter over here. And then all the overviews here will update for you. And that is basically how our income and expense tracker works. If you have any feedback, anything you're missing or anything you would like to see added in the future, or if you have any questions, just be sure to send us a message. You can find our contact information on the README tab. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.